Frederick, shall we get going? Yeah, I think so. So I'm sure that someone has already put the link in, but if you've not already added yourself to the meeting minutes um, here, please do. Great, if we can get someone to uh, share the agenda as well, that'd be good. And with that, I will go ahead and get started. So welcome to the Network Service Mesh uh, call. So we, uh, we have three calls that we generally do. We have the NSM doc, which is currently on uh, hiatus uh, until uh, Jeffrey gets back. Uh, we have the NSM use cases, which uh, the uh, next meeting will be on August 13th. And we have the CNCF Telecom user group. Sorry, they, which, sorry the NSM one was today, uh, 13. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll ping, uh, I, they, the date looks wrong on this one. I'll ping uh, 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 the people running that to see what we can do with that. Uh, we have the CNCF uh, Telecom User Group, which uh, occurs every first and third Monday at 8 a.m. And there is a CNCF Networking Working Group, which occurs every two weeks on Tuesday at 9 a.m. Pacific time. So we have a few major events coming up. We have... Uh, ONS Europe, which will be in Antwerp, where we have four accepted talks, the Telecom User Group Meetup, and a CNCF Testbed Tutorial. We also have the Open Source Summit coming up in Lyon with a talk accepted by Ivana and Radoslav. And we have KubeCon plus Cloud Native Con. So for those of you that were not here last week, uh, we have a co-located NSM event known as NSMCon. Uh, we have uh, listed the call for proposals and a uh, pre-register uh, tweet is, that's uh, been posted up. And so uh, we also uh, should be having a few talks at uh, KubeCon as well. So we'll post the agenda when we, uh, when we get it. Um, for the proposals for the NSMCon, uh, the submissions will close one month from now on September 13th. So get all your friends to uh, submit. And uh, with that, do we have Lucina on? Not on, not on call, but she. Hello. Oh, oh, there you are. That's awesome. Thank you so much for um, announcing some of those things. It's in line with what our Twitter account um, was doing this week. So let's see how we're doing. Last week we had 352 followers. This week we have 360. We we're following 1647 and this week 1670. And last week we had 342 tweets, and this week we have 366. Awesome. And I sent out the reminder for today's call, the um, NSMCon registration, the initial release announcement, shared the blog post from VMware Open Source about part two, Network Service Mesh. There's a Network Service Mesh intro at Open Source Summit in Europe and um, shared again the CFP for NSMCon. So this week, I'll continue announcing the ONS EU intro and the OSS EU. And once the KubeCon NSM events are posted, I think that's probably in a few weeks yet for KubeCon talks, but I can definitely keep promoting the Network Search Mesh Con and the CFP call for proposals. And um, whenever we're ready to do 020 release, please let me know. And um, I was really quick. It was on a Friday when I noticed the, the V010. So I put it together pretty quickly. 
Um, this next one, I'm happy to put together a draft to make sure I'm capturing um, all of the new functionality that you'd like to share with the world. Cool. Yeah, so uh, with that, that actually brings us to a short announcement, which was uh, the V010 branch was, uh, was uh, finally tagged. And so that should mark the, uh, the 010 release for people to, uh, to start testing. Um, so of course, this particular release is, um, is a, I want to say between alpha and beta quality. So uh, uh, I'm not saying don't run it in production, but uh, be, uh, be, but if you were very brave, if you do, <laughs> and, uh, uh, but any feedback we can, uh, we can get, of course, we, we appreciate. Um, and uh, all fixes are going to go into uh, master. So we're not going, 010 should not, it's not going to be a point release. It's not going to have any point releases like 011, 012. Uh, and so uh, with, uh, with that, uh, we should move on to the stuff that is currently in progress. Uh, uh, Ed, you're, you're listed, so you have the floor. Yeah, so um, I apologize. I'm just getting back from PTO, so I haven't had a chance to go through and groom the outstanding PRs. But um, when I was last here, we'd walked through the stuff in progress. So I wanted to get the community a bit of an update on where we stand on the, the sort of things that we talked about then and make sure that we capture any new stuff in progress. Um, and the same is true for specs and review. So um, I know when we last spoke, we talked about the DNS work, which was in progress and was being broken into smaller PRs to be merged. Um, and so, Denise, do you want to say a few words about where we stand for the DNS work? I think you're muted, Denise. Yeah, it seems so. Okay. Okay, I think that's mostly in at this point. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Uh, there may be one or one patch or so still out. Yeah, I need to review the, the latest uh, pull request, and it seems it should be complete and ready to be merged. If all will be fine from our side, from your reviewers. Cool. And then that that that's actually very interesting because what it lets us do is, um, if you have a network service and the network service is part of what it does, also provides DNS, then the pod can receive that DNS service. Um, as well as whatever DNS it's normally getting from Kubernetes. Uh, and that actually works if your pod is consuming multiple network services as well. So that's super exciting from a usability point of view. Um, the other thing that was in progress was security. And I think, Ilya, how is that going? Oh, it's going fine. Uh, the next PR is, I mean, the third is ready and it should be reviewed. It's already been reviewed by Nikolai, I think. Okay, so, so that'll bring in, yeah, yeah. And that'll bring in sort of standard spiffy spire kinds of security, plus some really interesting things around provenance uh, so that you can make sure that not only do you trust the guy asking for the network service, but you trust the various intermediaries that have been collaborating on providing it. Um, cool. So Artem, how is interdomain going? Uh, first part of interdomain already been merged, and uh, we all, we are almost at the point when all uh, interdomain will be done. Cool. Um, what kinds of stuff is still outstanding? Um, almost uh, all uh, functionality left is testing. Okay. Okay, cool. I know you'd identified a little problem with how we're assigning VNIs that's being sorted, but um, but it's the kind of thing you normally discover when you expand functionality. A quick question for folks on the call. How many of you guys understand what interdomain means? Okay, because it's incredibly cool. Uh, effectively, what it means is that I can be running a pod in a cluster in some place like GKE, and it can consume a network service that is provided um, 
by a cluster in AKS um, or some other place and vice versa. Um, so it, it means that we can actually do network service domains uh, that smear across multiple clusters and potentially across multiple different environments. Um, it, it sort of finally frees us from a particular cluster in terms of networking and allows us to provide network services quite generally. Cool. Uh, yeah, this is Brian. So I'm first time attending this in a long oh, time. Right. Hey, um, it, for that interdomain, then is there a, a way of understanding the like the latency and the like if it is? Uh, I, I have no idea. Like I got a lot of reading to do. So <laughs> no, um, that, that's quite that's quite that, that's a really good question. Um, so I. I, I think we've got some other people in the community who've been looking at that kind of problem. Like Matthew, I think you've been looking at some of the metric stuff here, not so much about latency, but in other directions. Do you want to uh, comment a bit? Yes, I have. Uh, I took a look at, at it, but uh, mainly to um, uh, to uh, report uh, the, the latency and have some kind of uh, metric to rely on, especially for uh, for uh, the scheduling of the of the new pods, or for the scheduling of uh, new network services. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's definitely stuff folks are looking at. We we the inter the current editor, I, mean, I don't think quite get to where you want to go. But if you've got folks, if you would be interested in looking at that, or have folks interested in looking at that, it's definitely well understood to be a problem we also need to solve. So thank you for speaking up. It's a good question. <clears throat> uh, hi, Ed. May yes. I ask you a question, please, about the oh, uh, inner domain things? Oh, uh -huh. cool. So, yeah, so basically, I'm curious about for, uh, let's talk about uh, communication between uh, pods uh, across clusters. So, uh, are you trying, so are we going to build a tunnel or between the clusters? So how, so how would you implement the uh, physical connections? Uh, yeah, so the, the, the way network service mesh in general does this is that we, we have a dynamic negotiation of tunnel types between mm -hmm. a, a, cons a client and something providing it with a network service. And right now, the one that we have built in support for is VXLAN. But we've got folks working on SRV6, and the architecture is designed for basically any tunnel type. So, um, you know, to, to be agnostic as to the tunnel type. And so uh, effectively, the idea would be that you could have any kind of a tunnel type that you wanted coming out of the negotiation. Um, you know, but the, the, the client doesn't have to understand tunnel types and the network service doesn't have to understand tunnel types. That's something that can be negotiated by the mesh itself. Mm -hmm. So, your... oh, yeah. So like say, um, so every connection uh, is gonna be peer to peer, point to point? Well, yes, between a client and a network service endpoint. Yeah. Right? So okay. obviously you wouldn't want to connect a bunch of clients that way, that, that, that becomes mm -hmm. significant. But if I had, say, a, a network service endpoint that was providing a network service, um, and I wanted to be able to have a pod that wasn't running in the same cluster participate in that network service, um, you could do that and, and effectively think of it as sort of a hub and spoke approach to the problem rather than a point to point approach to the problem. But it's not a bridge approach to the problem because between any given client and network service, you've got a, a point to point connection. Uh, that way, you always know exactly who the client is that's talking to the network service. Okay, so ju uh, just one last thing. Um, so for uh, for this uh, client and uh, uh, I mean service providers or NC endpoint, uh, so will there be a single tunnel? So there will be there, so even for uh, crossing the clusters. Because uh, I'm, what I'm thinking is, uh, I'm, I'm curious about the abilities for, um, is it possible to build a single tunnel across the connector, uh, across the cluster, or do we need like say several seg segmentations and put them together into form a, well, the, uh, a tunnel? The, the fundamental thing is that when you get to the network service endpoint, it has to see uh, individual point to point connections for each client so that it knows which client is, is which. Uh, so okay. it can do, all the pro do the proper behavior. Um, but, you know, what happens in the intermediate stage can be very flexible. 
Um, so okay. at a fundamental logical level, network service mesh thinks in terms of workload communications, not cluster to cluster communications. So if you want sure. to do something like trunk a bunch of stuff along a single tunnel between clusters, I mean, you could mechanically make that happen, but when it gets to the network service endpoints on the other end, those network service endpoints have to be able to distinguish the traffic from each client um, in, a, in a straightforward way. But th this is actually super powerful because you almost never care, logically speaking, about cluster to cluster communication. What you care about is workload to workload communication. You know, typically clusters have way more stuff running in them uh, than you want. And so then you introduce all kinds of insane attempts at IP based policy um, between the IPs and the clusters and it gets super messy. Um, it turns out to greatly simplify things when you actually focus on what you really care about, which is workloads talking to workloads. Cool. Thanks for the uh, explanation. And also, thank you. Uh, thanks for the note, uh, note taken. Is that Taylor? Thank you. Yeah, they think, I, I think that may be Lucina. Oh, Lucina. All right. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah, that one's Taylor. Uh, thanks, Taylor. Oh, thank you, Taylor. Yeah, good notes are a wonderful thing. Um, Oh, sorry. I think it's Taylor showing it and Lucina typing. Anyways. Ah, okay. We, 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 have, we have an excellent team. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now this is all Taylor. Um, cool. Yeah. <clears throat> no, it, it, it's... The, 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 the really good shorthand, Jason, is to realize that in network service mesh, we think about everything in terms of workloads communicating to network services, not clusters communicating to things. Um, so we don't weld with the clusterness, really. Cool. Any, anything else that folks wanted to talk about or ask about with interdomain? Um, do we have any good documentation for how people can play with the interdomain feature? Does anyone know? Should we go look? Because it strikes me that it's going to be something people are going to want to play with. I think we need to build a, uh, a demo around this so that people can, uh, can try it. Yep. No, I would tend to agree. Because again, it's super exciting stuff. So. Cool. So anyone interested in sort of poking at it and writing down the experience so we can do a demo, please speak up, you know, go and, and do so. You know, PR is super welcome on that front. It, it should be great fun. Awesome. So we've also got increased pluggability. Um, do you want to comment a bit about this, Victoria? I know you've, you've got some basic infrastructure in place and you, you've now, you're now slowly making the whole world more modular. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we've merged uh, the plugin uh, infrastructure in, to the master and uh, together with the connection plugin, the first plugin we have. And uh, I'm continuing to work uh, on uh, other plugins uh, like discovery plugin and the registry plugin. Okay. Yeah, it, it, modularity is a good idea. I mean, what I, what I increasingly find is when you've got a, a system that's modular, it, it just makes life much, much easier. Um, I know I think the first one you guys did was to uh, factor out how we figure out the exclude prefixes. And for folks who aren't familiar, that's the mechanism we use to, for example, avoid colliding with the intra-cluster Kubernetes networking. And we, in the first pass, we sort of built that into the network service manager directly. But it makes all the, as we get people interested in doing NSM in a broader array of environments, um, having greater modularity um, makes life enormously easier. So, cool. Um, <clears throat> all right. Artem, do you want to comment a little on how SRV6 is going? Um, NSM was already reorgan reorganized uh, to work with multiple mechanisms. So right now I'm working on configuring uh, a SRV6 connection mm -hmm. for, as a remote mechanism. Cool. Cool. Um, I know that, that we, we have one or two people who are super interested in that. I don't know if the the people in question are on the call today. I don't think so. But um, there are definitely people who are interested in that. And it's a really good thing because it's sort of our first example of a second remote mechanism. And as you're as we all know, that every time you do the first example, the second, th second thing, you shake out bugs. 
So, cool. Uh, do we have Radoslav here to talk about the kernel uh, forwarding plane? Yep. Hey, hi. Ed. Hey. Uh, yeah. So uh, I'm really happy that it's uh, it got finalized a bit, at least the the, the first implementation. Uh, yep. It's already merged, so everyone that is willing to try it can can mm -hmm. follow the steps and be able to share any feedback. <laughs> um, yep. Yeah. For the time being, it's uh, it it. It's it's not supporting yet the the functionality of adding crowds and neighbors. So this is the thing that that uh, that I'm thinking to add next. Cool. No, th this is super exciting. I mean, we've already always designed and intended for network service mesh to support multiple pluggable forwarding planes for the cross connects, um, but nothing is really real till you do the second one. So this yeah. is really. <laughs> Um, and, and it's also good that you're sort of immediately getting people reporting feature requests like uh, please support the routing and, and neighbor stuff. Um, so that that's also really, really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. And then the SDK evolution stuff. So I still need to go back and rebase this PR and, and get it finished up. This is something where I was making the SDK a little bit more modular and also building into it the ability to trace at the sub gRPC call level. So if you could just imagine a composite where you have a, a, a list of small little pieces of work like connect the interface to the data plane, you know, configure this about the data plane, et cetera. Um, that's kind of what I'm doing with the SDK evolution. But with the tracing that I've done, you can actually see the traces internally when you um, go through each of those steps. So it becomes super easy to figure out, like not only where, what's going on inside of the network service endpoint, but also where you're leaking time in the call. Um, and as I'm doing this, I'm sort of you know catching out things where I, I think I already had a place where I'm like, okay, clearly there's a lot of contention there. I can literally see it in the trace or that kind of thing. So. Um, it, it might be a good approach to even extend to how we build network service managers at some point, because that would even make it simpler for people to build network service managers for different environments. Cool. Is there anything else that folks have in progress that isn't listed here that we can highlight? I literally just cut and pasted this from two weeks ago um, when we met. So I want to make sure we're highlighting other people's work that's going on as well. Cool. Um, and then the, the, the second thing is um, we have a mechanism in Network Service Mesh to um, allow the community to talk to itself that we can refer to as specs. And this is not a mandatory thing. You don't have to go write a spec before you write code. But if you have a thing you think you want to do and you'd like to go and have that conversation with the broader community before you write code, um, we have our spec board. And you can go and write a spec issue. And we typically, what we'll do is we'll, people will usually write those as Google Docs. And then having done so, because it's easiest to collaborate on that. And then when somebody goes to implement the thing, they'll, they'll actually write down a spec that gets committed to the repo that describes what was really done. Um, and so the, those specs end up being a good way for the community to talk to itself and for people to have a sense of what's, what people are thinking and where it's all going. Um, and to bring in differing ideas on things. And then I listed out a few of, possibly not all of, the, the specs that I think are actively out there. Um, so do you want to go back to the list of the, 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 the meeting minutes? Cool. Yeah, and um, a quick note while we're doing that, um, something that we, that we could also, that we also can do for people is if you have something you want to build that's not going to be part of the NSM repo, but is rather owned by your organization, and you want comments and are, and are comfortable with public comments on it, post it onto the spec board here and we will, uh, we will help you as well. Yeah, totally. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, it's, it's meant for conversation more than anything. So, yeah, so that that won't get committed in or anything uh, into into our repo. It'll just be uh, a nexus that you can use to get feedback. Yep. So uh, just a few that are currently sort of hanging out there that would probably benefit from more eyeballs. So we've got the getting rid of device plugin um, <clears throat> that um, 
is currently being discussed. We, we currently abuse device plug a little bit, and once security lands, we hope to be able to abuse it a little bit less. Um, so there's a spec here about switching more to TCP for the communication between local uh, network service endpoints and network service clients and their, their per node network service manager. So that, that's been sort of laid out here. Anyone want to comment on this at all? Um, any of the folks behind it want to talk about it a little bit before we move on to the next one? Cool. So the next up is, um, I think of, of Vana is working on uh, trying to figure out how we would interact with SMI. Do you want to say a few things about that, Ivana? Yes, uh, I'm uh, finally involved. There was an issue with receiving data banks in cross connection monitor, but it's. Uh, your audio is a little muddled, Ivana, or maybe that's just me. Can, is everyone else clearly or not? Can you hear me? Uh, hmm? Uh, the volume is really low. Uh, do, can you hear me now? Uh, you're a little bit better now, yes. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, so there was a walking issue there, which is uh, which is fixed since last week. Uh, the cross connect monitor wasn't receiving update events, but it's uh, working well now, and uh, I figured out the, the uh, Thing that uh, I was considering is how to. Uh, I'm, I'm currently working on the observability, which is the first part. And it's import, important for NSM separately for SMI, uh, and uh, it's the first thing to integrate uh, with their matrix, SMI matrix. And uh, the first thing I was trying to consider is how to uh, form queries in a well descriptive way so that uh, you can search per client, per type of communication. And so currently it's formed by the namespace of the client. Is it source or desk and type of packages? It is Rx and Dx. And I'm currently forming those queries and uh, I started preparing a pull request for the Prometheus integration. Um, and uh, this is uh, this is the first thing. I'm concentrating on metrics now. Okay, sounds good. Cool. <clears throat> All right. So then, um, other specs. Um, we have a, a spec that's been out there, and I don't think we have the gentleman behind it on the call today. Uh, looking at essentially uh, looking at more sophisticated selection of candidates. Um, right now, Network Service Mesh has a fairly sophisticated label-based way of selecting a set of candidates for connecting for what network service endpoints it connects a client to. Um, but once you've selected a set of candidates, we just sort of round robin among them. And so this spec is sort of looking at how could we be more sophisticated and make smarter decisions. My guess is this is likely going to start interacting at some point with um, some of the stuff that's going on with modularizing the network service manager and breaking things out into plugins. Um, but it's also cool. And then I think, um, Matthew, what I don't have here on the list that we probably should is um, the stuff you're doing on gateway work. Do you want to say a few words about that? Um, yes, I'm still having a... Go ahead and add the links for it there if I don't get to it first, so. Okay. Still good looking at uh, what we can do. And uh, uh, of course, we can uh, use some uh, device plugin stuff. Uh, especially the one that uh, is already in the NSM tree. Uh, I'm looking at it, but there are some quite simple alternatives that could be interesting, especially uh, by combining uh, Multus with uh, NSM. This is a simple uh, workaround, but it's not in the scope of NSM for now. So uh, what I would like to to see in NSM is a, is a way for a, um, an endpoint to tell that I want to be an ingress of the, the service mesh of the, of the mesh, or I want to be an egress for the mesh, especially for VPN gateways or for, uh, or for uh, ingress gateway. Okay, so, so sort of like a forwarding, sort of like a, a 
affording plane that gets you in or out of the, the, the cluster? Yes, uh, and um, because for now there is no way to uh, to tell how to uh, uh, how to how to consume traffic from the external uh, external world or how to send traffic out of the out of the mesh. This is really the the, the work that I get I'm working on. Hmm. Cool. No, that, that that's actually super useful stuff, um, and and. You, you, there's been a lot of interest. There's been a lively conversation around some of this, so mm. I would encourage folks to get involved and participate because um, there, there's definitely interesting stuff there. Cool. Anything else that I'm missing from the specs board that folks want to sort of bring up and make sure that we discuss? Uh, sorry, Ed, I had a problem with the microphone. Can I say a few words so related to Dines? Yes, please. Uh, by DNS spec, I've provided second PR and it's ready for review. The PR passed all tests. Uh, in this PR, I've provided solution for case when sidecar uh, performs uh, connection. Also, in, th in this part, I've provided tests that NSM core DNS not break default Kubernetes DNS. So please take a look. Uh, after that, I plan to provide final part of DNS. Uh, for case when an assignment container uh, performs connection. Uh, that's it. Cool. No, it sounds good. Um, I know you, you, you've you been breaking this up into small reviewable pieces, which is much appreciated. Um, so this, this is all very good news. Thank you. So I think that's the end of the stuff that I have. Uh, so I'll yield back the floor. Cool. So I have one more thing that I'm going to soon add onto the specs board. So that's going to be, um, so the, uh, the make file machinery uh, has been quite useful to the NSM project. And I think it'll be useful to others who are outside of the NSM project as well. Um, and so what I'm, what I'm going to propose in the specs board is that we, uh, we set the make file machinery. So everything is, is in a dot MK uh, directory with the exception of the main make file itself. Uh, so what I'm going to propose is that we take that .mk, we split it into things that are generic and things that are NSM specific, uh, parameterize a few of the things that are, that have, that are NSM specific. <coughs> and then what people will be able to do is, uh, is basically copy that git, git repository. So we'll split the MK into a, into a git repository that, or copy it rather that you can then use to import into, into other projects. So if you have a set of microservices you want to, to test and you want to use uh, make in order to drive it, you could say make Kubernetes dash start, make Kubernetes dash your app dash deploy and so on, and have everything work in the same way that it works within the, uh, the MSM system itself. And so uh, I'll write up some, uh, some documentation on what my ideas are so that people can get a sense of that as well. Um, I don't have any other thing on my side with that. Cool. No, I think that that's, I'm, I'm super happy that it's turned out the make file stuff is sufficiently useful that we think other people might benefit from it. Um, I know it was sort of born with a frustration of making everything simple and it's a good indication that maybe we succeeded. Yeah, and I think one great part of it as well is uh, is uh, it also it has decent uh, machinery around getting it to work in other clouds as well. And so, uh, and it also sets it up so that in the long run, uh, it, it it helps makes things modular because I what I would love to eventually see is like the people from uh, the uh, cross cloud organization has done a tr tremendous amount of work um, with with multi-cloud scenarios as well. And so it, it also helps set us up with the groundwork so that uh, we can potentially reintegrate back with that work when, uh, when we're both ready to do so as well. That way we're not maintaining two separate, uh, two separate things. So, uh, so I, so I see it as like a step of making sure that we don't get, that we also don't get too integrated or rather we're, things get too messy and where that becomes a, a difficult task. So there's also a slight added bonus in that space. Cool. Awesome.
So that is the end of our agenda. Is there anything else anyone would like to uh, bring up before we uh, before we close the, uh, the meeting? Okay, with that, we will see you all at the same time next week. Thank you everyone for, uh, for showing up and you all have a uh, great day. Bye bye. Bye bye. Sure. bye. Thank you. Cheers.